This lecture begins our exploration of the science of astronomy. We'll learn about how ancient peoples looked at the sky and how their understanding of the universe evolved into our modern study of astronomy. This image was taken on the summer solstice at Stonehenge in the United Kingdom, and it captures a sunrise involving fog, trees, clouds, and stones placed about 4,500 years ago, plus our five billion year old star. Even given the precession of the Earth's rotational axis over the millennia, the sun continues to rise over Stonehenge in a meaningful astronomical way. Humans have looked at the sky for as long as there have been humans. Studying ancient astronomy is the study of the history of humanity and how our approach to the natural world has changed. Archaeoastronomy is the study of astronomical practices, celestial lore, mythologies, religions, and worldviews of all ancient cultures. Archaeoastronomy is, in essence, the anthropology of astronomy. Many of our current systems have their roots in ancient astronomy, including timekeeping, tracking the season, calendars, lunar cycles, watching the planets and stars, and predicting things like eclipses. Here's one example of the practical application of observations. People in ancient Africa could determine where they were in the rainy season or dry season just from observations of the crescent moon. And here's an example of what we still live with today. The seven days were originally linked to the sun, moon, and the five planets visible to the naked eye. These objects were called the wanderers since they appeared to wander among the fixed stars. Ancient people could keep track of the time during the day by watching the sun's path through the sky. Many cultures probably used sticks and the shadows they cast as simple sundials. The ancient Egyptians built huge obelisks that likely served as simple clocks. Archaeologists believe Stonehenge was built between 3000 BC and 2000 BC, and that the location served as a burial ground and as a social and religious gathering place. It is also a means of marking the seasons. This sketch shows how archaeologists believe Stonehenge looked upon its completion in about 1550 BC. Several astronomical alignments are shown as they would appear from the center. For example, at summer solstice, an observer standing within the stone circle looking northeast through the entrance would see the sun rise above the heel stone. The Templo Mayor was one of the main temples of the Aztecs. It featured twin temples on a flat-topped pyramid. From the vantage point of a royal observer watching from the opposite side of the plaza, the sun would rise through the notch between the temples on the equinoxes. Many cultures aligned their buildings and streets with north, south, east, and west directions, which made it easier to keep track of the changing rise and set positions of the sun over the course of the year. This type of alignment is found from sites as diverse as the Egyptian pyramids in the Forbidden City in China, as well as among Ceremonia Kivas built by ancestral Pueblo people of the American Southwest. This sun dagger was created by the ancestral Pueblo people in Chaco Canyon, New Mexico. Three large slabs of rock lie in front of a carved spiral in such a way that they would produce special patterns of light and shadow at different times of the year. For example, at noon on the summer solstice, a single dagger of sunlight would pierce the center of the spiral. On the winter solstice, two daggers of light would bracket the spiral. Many ancient structures have been fairly straightforward for archaeoastronomers to interpret, but many other cases are more ambiguous. For example, ancient people in what is now Peru etched hundreds of lines and patterns in the sand of the Nazca Desert. Many of the lines point to places where the sun or bright stars lie at particular times of the year, but this could be coincidental. There are hundreds of lines, so random chance ensures that many will have astronomical alignments, no matter how or why they were made. Many of the patterns are animals, which could be representative of constellations. 
In some cases, archaeoastronomers can use other clues to establish the intentions of ancient builders. For example, traditions of the Inca Empire of South America held that its rulers were descendants of the sun and therefore they demanded close watch of the movements of the sun and the stars. This fact supports the idea that astronomical alignments in Inca cities were deliberate rather than accidental. Polynesian navigators used a combination of astronomical knowledge and an understanding of the patterns of the waves and swells to travel great distances among their islands. Important celestial events were also noted by ancient people. This may be one of the earliest known records of a supernova explosion or the death of a supermassive star. And here is a more modern example of marking the seasons. On the solstices, the sun is located just right for sunlight to stream through the openings and spell out the term for the longest and shortest day of the year. On two other days of the year, watchers of the sundial might get to see it produce another word, equinox. That's it for ancient astronomy. Um, I hope you enjoyed the lecture, and I will talk to you soon.